So anybody with a fish pond could run the pump and pull water from it and run out of products. Absolutely. As long as your pH levels were somewhere in check, you know, if you're pulling off your pond and it was real high in pH, then your plants are going to like it. If it's too low, your plants are going to like it. So you might have to add some calcium. You might do a few additives, but you can't water. I mean, right now, with my water, I've got high calcium water. And everything that, all my tests that I've done off of my pond water is just about right for, for feeding. I mean, I might have to add a little bit of like lime here and there, you know, for some of the plants, but besides that, and you know, a lot of the information that you find in there will talk about water in great detail. And how, and that's the most important thing in this whole system. You know, you've got to have good water. It's got to be at a certain pH. It can't be, can't be too dirty. It can't have too much iron. It can't have too much calcium. So on a commercial scale, you, you would run this through like an RO system, reverse osmosis, bring your water completely neutral, and then add what you need. You know, instead of like, what we do, you know, as a, a home hobbyist, you know, you get your you get your water going, you test it, maybe have some pH down, pH up in it, check the water, you might have to add a little bit of calcium carbonate, but all that stuff is cheap. It's available at every hardware store, every feed store, you know, that you can buy in all different, I mean, in, in different forms too. Maybe you can buy powdered lime, you can buy powdered moisture shells. So there's a lot of different ways to get a chemical balance, you know, from, from for what you need, but everybody's situation is different. Depend on, it's, it's depend on your water. Like my water out of my well is a constant struggle. And I got nine, about a nine pH come out of my well, and so I have to let it. I have a holding tank, let it set, <coughs> and then I only pump the, lot, the last two thirds of that water off after I've treated it, and then I pump that into my aquaponics system so that I can maintain a good pH. So it's all about just your water quality, checking your chemical balance. <clears throat> it's you're set. It's, it's fairly easy once, like I said, once you get started. Mm. On your fish pond, is there a liner in it? I have a liner in it, yes. <coughs> a PVC liner. It's a high grade PVC liner. It's, it's a specialized for fish because I knew I was going to have fish in there someday. Mm. So I haven't had any problems with it as far as, you know, when I first started my pond up there, I wasn't even thinking aquaponics at the time, but I knew about how to battle nitrates in a pond because that's what I do. I build ponds for a living. So I know how to build biofilters and everything like that. And all these years I've been building these biofilters and I should have been building ponds with more grow situations in them. Really, you know, if you think about it. And that's what we do in a pond. We try to introduce a ton of pond plants, proper algaes, proper bacteria, things that will eat those excess nitrates out of your pond. You know, from people's lawns, fertilizers, everything. Get in there, so it's a constant combat for me. And then, you know, when I finally realized about this aquaponic thing, and for 20 years I've been kind of doing the wrong thing with the ponds, you know, that I could have been doing something a little bit different. I could have been building systems for people that could have been a little bit more uh, sustainable, you know. So, as a matter of fact, I was at a, a Rhea Bronson's house, and Dave, I think you know Rhea fairly well, mm -hmm. and we're I'm trying to talk them into setting up a, a system off of, off of her pond, her upper pond that I built. 10 years ago, that goes into a lower garden area and filters right back into her pond. So, I'm trying to talk to her husband and doing something like that. There, just you know, for more, more people doing it because he keeps adding fish <laughs> and having algae problems. So, <laughs> that's just something that you can think about. It's uh, it's kind of amazing when you think about it. Every when you start really thinking about the way this works and how simple it really is. <clears throat> like I had a breakdown of my in my aquaponics system last year. So I grabbed all my rafts and I threw them in my pond. And it took me about three or four days to fix my breakdown in my aquaponics system. I had a major leak. So I pretty much dismantled a bunch of stuff and it just took, took some time. And I was thinking, oh man, everything's gonna die. And that's what made me, well, then I went, well, dumb, Mark. Why don't you hook up a grow table off of your, off your stupid fish pond? Because those three days that those rafts were floating around in my pond, they did awesome. I mean, they just did great. So I was like, huh, you know. And so I started looking at that a little bit more seriously. And so you think about how simple that was. I just had these rafts and I threw them in my pond. So if you look at backwaters, like on the Stillwater River. So if somebody's living on Stillwater and they got an Oxbow Lake that fills up every year, heck, you can grow vegetables right out of that if you wanted. And then you think about that, how simple that is, and it makes you think, why in the heck are we doing what we do with major agriculture?
<laughs> and then, you know, if you ever want to see a really neat permaculture case, if you drive up, uh, um, oh gosh, we brought up like, up a con road there. Oh shoot, I'm sorry. Um, it's up towards Whitefish, off a of Whitefish Stage Road. This guy's set up about a 45, 50 acre permaculture, Gordon Cross. And it is very, very neat to drive by. It looks like a golf course, pretty much. And he's doing an active uh, permaculture system. There's another one in Ronan. Uh, there's two more that are supposedly going in in this area. I'm not sure where. So, we I mean, Supposedly somebody down at Hot Springs. Hot, yes, Hot Springs, uh, Lake Mary Ronan area. There's another one that's going to go in down there. And Hot Springs, when I heard about that one, but I don't know anything about it. I don't know if Jim Archer. It's might be. here. Uh, Mike Polarski. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's down there. So again, you know, Chris's question, do you think this is going to be a viable thing in the future? It's starting to happen. And if you look at Northwest Montana and anywhere else in the nation, we are actually on, we're kind of in the driver's seat a little bit right now as far as, you know, there's places in Southern California and Oregon and all that, but this is a large area from, from Canada down to the Idaho Utah border, you know, this whole area, this five county region is very active in this, you know, personal gardens, um, organic farms. I mean, there's, if you look at a map, there's, there's a tunnel all up and down this corridor. Ronan has a, a facility, was it Ronan or Pablo? Pablo has a facility to, to bring in people's crops. So say you grow 300 pounds of basil and you're like, yeah, what am I doing all this basil? You actually you know, market it and get rid of it, make a few bucks. So there's more and more of that happening. And so that's kind of why I'm like, well, you know, this is a good way to a good way to get in. And then in Montana, like I said earlier, we're in a we're in an island of no vegetables up here seven months out of the year. You know, what about the old Walmart building? You can set up an aquaponics center there. And who knows, Walmart might get behind it. <laughs> you know, we're, we're telling. But there's a lot of possibilities, you guys. And, so, you know, I hope that I have answered a lot of your questions tonight. And if you have any more, my email address, feel free to email it. If people want to come and actually see the thing working, I don't have a problem with that either. So I, I like people to get out and get interested in it. I mean, someday I'd like to make a living at this, even commercially. Um, but for right now, I know where it's at. And it's, it's in its infancy. And the more people that know about it, the more of these units I can possibly sell someday, you know, for somebody good. Or the idea, just in the idea, you know, not if it's just aquaponics, the idea of people being more sustainable and using less fossil fuels, would, it, that really is what intrigues me, I guess, the most. As you know, you think about, you know, everything that's uh, being burnt up every day, what can you do to stop that? Well, fertilizer, for one. I mean, we are burning electricity here, so, you know, we've got to think of ways to, to solve that, which that's fairly obvious. There's solar wind. Hydro. So if you live next to a river, you do hydro. Dave was just showing us earlier about a little hydro tube that you can stick in a river, and it produces energy. You know, and you can hook that up to batteries or whatever else you want. The solar power panels these days are pretty impressive, and there's a lot of government grants and tax relief you can get by installing these type of things. So there's you know there's ways to finance it, and there's agriculture grants. You know there's there's a, a, a agriculture benefits through, like for this tilapia system, if I could prove that I'm heating it efficiently and not using a lot of energy, I could actually get a deduction on my taxes. I mean, there's just a ton of different routes for doing that, and especially if you go into a business situation with it. You know, right now, I think Montana Power was offering, I can't remember how many, how many how much you had to power, but it was like up to $7,500 for a business, and they would help pay for a solar installation or a wind installation. And then they would get the government grants, um, public, there's some public grants, some publicly funded grants out there. So there's a ton of information and resources for money for people who want to you know, pursue something like this. It's just, you want to sit down and do it correctly. You know, and again, it depends on what your level of interest is, you know, commercial or hobby. I'm kind of in between. All right, thanks, Mark. You bet. Uh, anybody else have any questions or anything? Good job. Uh, it was good.